and approved shareholder dividends, and experts warn the world may be on the cusp of a new inflationary era. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Farah. EAN, formerly known as Itisalat Group, has approved dividends to shareholders for the second half of 2021 at one cent per share, representing a total annual dividend of two cents per share. EAN says it's seizing different opportunities to create a more progressive business model. EAN topped the Forbes MENA top 10 most valuable listed companies in the UAE list with $2.53 billion, an increase of 3.2% year on year. The London Stock Exchange Group has signed a pact to provide Qatar Stock Exchange with its trading and market surveillance technology, allowing the Gulf Bourse to expand into derivatives trading. The new QSE system will be built on LSE's financial markets product suite. The QSE says it will be able to launch a new derivatives market owing to LSEG's real-time clearing and risk system. The world is moving into a new state of inflation and interest rates as the war in Ukraine, the COVID-19 aftermath and the extraordinary fiscal, monetary and regulatory responses to the pandemic put globalization in retrograde. The Bank of International Settlements says the world may be on the cusp of a new inflationary era. Year-on-year inflation is currently above 5% in nearly 60% of advanced economies due to rising global energy and food prices. Wall Street experts are now forecasting a possible economic downturn on the horizon. Deutsche Bank is the first major bank on Wall Street to forecast a recession next year, albeit a moderate one due to surging inflation and rising interest rates. Moody's says recession and stagflation will be serious threats as long as the Ukraine war continues. And Goldman Sachs says the period of stagflation that occurred in the 70s is the most clear example of the economic environment investors are facing today. The collective wealth of the world's billionaires dropped by $400 billion from last year, according to Forbes 2022 list. But not everyone had a rough year. Elon Musk saw the most gains as his fortune grew by $68 billion to an estimated $290 billion. Changpeng Zhao, who co-founded cryptocurrency exchange Binance, took his fortune from under $2 billion to $65 billion over the past year. America has 735 billionaires, China has 607, India has 166, Germany with 134, and Russia has 83. And that brings us to today's Forbes real-time billionaires ranking. Despite Musk's gains over the year, he's our biggest loser today, down $12.8 billion overnight with net wealth of $290.3 billion. Our second biggest loser today is Jeff Bezos, down $4.3 billion with net wealth of $189.8 billion. And our third place loser is Larry Ellison, down $2 billion with net wealth of $116.2 billion. Check out our website and our social media for all of the latest billionaires news. Electric vehicle maker Rivian produced 2,553 vehicles in the first quarter and delivered 1,227 vehicles during the period. Rivian also reiterated its commitment to producing 25,000 EVs this year. Rivian, which is known as Tesla's main competitor, struggled lately with the realities of launching and ramping new EV products. It cites the war in Ukraine as adding to supply chain and cost pressures. Mark Wahlberg has a punishing physical routine that keeps him in shape, but for his latest role in Father Stew, Wahlberg is piling on the pounds with a diet of porterhouse steak, baked potatoes, a dozen eggs every morning, a dozen pieces of bacon, two bowls of white rice, and a glass of olive oil. It's all for his role as an amateur boxer who quits after an injury and moves to Hollywood to become an actor. I'm Ramia Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.